Hello, I'm Kerry. and I work in Big Pit. Where we are now is the pit head baths, where everybody's day starts and finishes. Um, the pit itself has been used since 1880, so not far off 100 years now. It's incredible to think that the coal that's cut in Big Pit won't just go to Wales or even the United Kingdom, it'll go all around the world. These days, of course, um, coal is, is either for house um, use or for creating electricity or making steel. It's got more specific uses than it used to have in the past. At the moment, there's about 40 mines in operation in Wales. But over the years, there's been about 3,000 collieries uh, in, in operation. Um, in the Victorian period, of course, uh, Welsh coal made its name because of uh, the need uh, for steam power in that period. Um, these days, of course, um, there's different needs for coal. We are now in the locker room of the, of the pit head baths. Uh, these are the dirty lockers, but we've also got a set of clean lockers the other side, and the clean lockers are for keeping your street clothes in. And the dirty ones, of course, are for keeping your dirty clothes in. The pit head baths is, is quite an important part of the colony. You can grease your boots here, you fill your water bottle to take underground here, um, and you can have a cup of tea here. So we know in, um, in the forge, the blacksmith's forge, um, blacksmiths, of course, uh, they're known for making all shoes, but they just about made anything that couldn't be bought in a place like this. Repair drums and all sorts of things. Um, and of course, in the colliery as a whole, it's not just miners who work underground. Uh, there's also fitters, electricians, um, uh, hydraulic people. Uh, on the surface, there's storekeepers, uh, mechanical engineers, um, mining engineers, um, the manager itself. And in the pit-head baths, uh, you've got the canteen ladies and also the, the colliery nurse as well and their assistants up there. So, like you said, it's not just miners working in the colliery. All right, here we are now on top of the pit. Um, behind me is the cage, which will take me underground. Uh, and it's about a 90 metre drop. Now, we have to carry everything along uh, with us, including your lamp, your self-rescuer, a dust mask, because it's very dusty in the cold face, and your, your bag with your water and food in it, okay? I've also got a pair of knee pads. Um, that protects your knees then when you're crawling up and down the cold face. Of course, there's lots of dangers underground. Okay, yeah, we know on the cold face, um, it's taken about half hour to get here. This is a very different type of cold face than my grandfather used to work on. Um, when he was working there, it was all picks and shovels, horses taking stuff out. And um, before his day, of course, there was also women working on the coal force itself. But today, as you can see, there's multi-million pound machinery in there. The conveyor takes the coal out. Um, there's hydraulic machinery for holding the roof up. And there's the big cutter behind me, which actually cuts the coal. Okay, uh, we know we're in the shower area of the pit dead baths. At one time, of course, you'd have had to walk home dirty and soaking wet back to the house. And uh, when you got there, of course, um, you wanted, you were expecting hot water, which the women had to provide. So it was hard work for them. Um, we didn't have hot water on tap. So you boiled it on, on the fire and you had the problems then, of course, with lots of hot water of um, children and women being scalded, um, dirty clothes left around the house. And so these days, of course, it's a lot, lot better. At one time, of course, the coalfield areas consisted mainly of small hill farms. Um, but when industry came into these areas, they, they changed dramatically. Um, during the height of the coal industry, around three quarters of the population of Wales actually lived in places like this. People came to these valleys from all over the world um, to create communities. And in these communities, there were sports people, there was artists, there was musicians, there was preachers, there was everything you can mention, all mixed together. Um, and this area at that time, of course, was about three quarters of the Welsh population. So this is a, a really Welsh story.